Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new series on Darkest Dungeon. I mentioned on Facebook that I might be doing this, and I am doing it. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead. We're in a tutorial. Uh, if you haven't seen this game before, well, just pause and read these, I guess. Uh, basically, we control Kai. Currently two characters, later we'll get several more. Uh, seriously, I know how to do it. Um, we have these two fellows who are currently on the way to the hamlet where this amazingly good voiceover actor has been living for some time. It's been quite a long time since I've played this game and it has actually been released before I played it in early alpha. I think it was early alpha? Anyway. There was a lot less stuff in the game then. As there is now, there's a decent amount of gold from that tent just now. So it's going to be several mechanics that I wasn't aware of. There's going to be a new couple of dungeons that I haven't played before. Now these chaps are surprised, which means at the end they won't be able to go until I've taken all my turns. And I think the easiest thing to do here is to just wail away on this particular... Oh, it resisted the bleed, that's no good to me. Zealous Accusation will do 4 to 8 on just that one, whereas this will do 6 to 12. We may take some hits here. We dodged, which is quite outstandingly good. You always start off with these two characters, which is a, a Paladin type and a Rogue type. A crit is very good because it reduces our stress down here down to zero. Stress is a, a big factor in this game, which is not a common mechanic you don't see all over the place. When most monsters die, they need corpses. Corpses obstacles. You can uh, you can destroy the corpse, which we might have to do because you'll notice that our skills can only attack enemies in certain positions. For example, none of the things I can currently do will attack this thing. I can buff myself, but that doesn't really help. So I guess we just start trying to attack this corpse and get it out of the way. Now later on we will find characters with skills that will help us a lot more. I mean we could hit this for 2-3 to three damage. Or we could just try and get rid of that. We could do a pistol shot. That might, that might help. Later on we will get characters that can do things like drag enemies around and move their positions or destroy corpses or both in most situations. I happen to know that in that box there, it's a trap. So I'm not going to do it. But that's the that's the tutorial. That's basically how the game goes. We walk from room to room, collecting money and gaining uh, these quirks. So we've got 15% damage versus beast and 15% stress uh, minus 15% stress damage versus beast. So when we're fighting beasts, they're less likely to um, to stress out that particular character. Who we will rename, we'll be collecting Welcome characters home. and renaming them. Such as it is. Such as it is. This squalid hamlet, these corrupted lands. They are yours now. And you press an old H. That's good to know. So if we right click on this, we can rename this. This is gonna be Ed. <laughs> I'm gonna put spaces in names because I am English and I can press the spacebar. This is gonna be me. Good. So I have a few. Oh, you can. Hello. Huh. Interesting. That might be actually very useful so we can tell people apart. I'm going to keep that second one on. What else have we got here? Yeah, it's just a, a color scheme, I think. And there's four of them. That's helpful. So we're going to build up uh, a whole roster of. Um, of players here. Women and men. And they've added and some. Outdoors. Please be quiet. I'm talking. Uh. They've added some new types, some new character types, clear. but I haven't seen those yet, so I'm not sure what this... Um... Oh, the, the border here shows you the level, and they start at level 0 because that is the first number. And you can also upgrade everything, uh, and this may be valuable to do early on. We have 10 of each set this, which gives us 20. Uh, but for now, I mean, we've got 4 of 9, so we don't need more room yet. But at the end of the next mission, we will now get three options. So five, six, seven. Uh, this is the 
what is this? Ancestors Memoirs. The tragic extent of my okay, so you can replay the missions that you've previously done, I think. That's pretty good. But we're not going to do that, we're going to press on. Graveyard will show us where people have died. We haven't lost anybody yet, so I think that's a very good start to this thing. Uh, let's see what skills we've got here. Because these are randomised when you collect uh, a new character. You get a random set of these seven skills. So, and they work differently together. Because you can see the preferred position of this um, crusader, that's the one, not a paladin, is either the first or second position, which can be very powerful because there are some characters that will use a skill and move position as a result of using that skill. Some of them send you forward, some of them send you back. So if this, uh, if Ed here can be in either of these two positions, then we can swap around a lot, which will be pretty good, because some of those skills are very useful. We have got Smite, which is just a straight up smack something in the face. Zealous Accusation smacks two things in the face with the power of anger. Uh, stunning Blow is a stun, but can only hit the first two targets. And then Bulwark of Faith... It actually gives us some torch, which is something else I'll explain, and a bit of protection and a marking of target, which is nice. Uh, there are some classes where if you have a mark on a target, they will do more damage against the marked target. In fact, if you see this one here, plus 25% damage versus marked. So had I used the Bulwark of Faith before to mark the target, it doesn't actually say which ones you can mark, uh, then I would have got extra damage. But we, we did fine, so it's not like it was a, a big deal. Uh, my preferred position is the second and third spot, which is great because, you know, we started off in the first and second positions respectively, and our preferred target is actually the second one. Uh, the pistol shot is just a great shooting in the face, grape shot blast is pretty good for w when you've got, you just want to do some damage across everything for a while just to keep things in check. An open vein does a bleed, which is 100% base, but th many things have resistances to many things. Uh, so that's not necessarily a brilliant idea. Tracking shot you would expect to be marking, but it does not do marking. Uh, but let's see what this uh, new new person has. This is a, a rear guard, and as is this one. See, this Divine Grace, this is our healer, basically, and our Divine Grace is from the last, the third or fourth positions, as is Judgment, which heals yourself and does damage to something else, which is pretty decent. Uh, and then these two are basically debuffs for the other enemy. So uh, you can see it, it has a minus 3% damage on it, but the debuff, I can't point at it, which is really annoying, uh, is minus 20% damage, minus 7 accuracy, and gives us a buff, so that's a, a straight up buff. And Illumination also does uh, a dodge debuff and some torch. So we're probably going to take, uh, let's rename these people. Uh, this will be our healer, and who should we pick to be this? Well, since this is a uh, a smelly, plaguey person, this would be Pete. Cool. Because as we've seen from the Isaac series, Pete is indeed a Jebend. We might as well just embark. Let's let's carry on, do a first mission, Omega, uh, and call that an episode. So here's how we basically played the game. Your there are four begins. places who where we will be going for now, and then there's a fifth one up here, the Darkest Dungeon itself, which I believe is just an endless trek where you just abandon it at any time. And we'll talk about some of the mechanics as we go along. It's a short mission. We will win some gold, some crests, and a health stone, which is 10% max HP and minus one speed. Uh, let's just go here. So it's going to be Ed. Can we just click once? Yes. Then me, then Pete, and then D. We should actually check what Pete's skills are. Notice how all these characters happen to perfectly line up in their preferred positions, which was a particularly prominent, powerfully plosive Secrets of things to say. Uh, so, hmm. We have medicine. I didn't actually know these had a, a, a medicine, but that's okay. Cure Blight and Bleed. That's pretty nice. That's going to be very valuable because there are lots of Blights and Bleeds coming up in the future. Emboldening Vapors is a straight up buff, which is pretty good at the start because if we don't really want this character to do anything straight away, we can buff one of the other ones. Or if like, there's no preferred target, really. You can hit the back to play something. Or the front to... Also play something. Or blight it, I suppose. Uh, so at the start, when we're not really... Or at the end. Something like that. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. Uh, let's go to provisioning and just press on with this. So we're going to need... 
It's a short mission, so we should probably take. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll take twelve because you can use food to heal as well as if you literally get hungry on the way. We'll take a key because it's likely a couple of spades, and I think we'll take eight torches. The torch light is something that we'll also talk about as we go along. Maybe one of these as well. Uh, because there's a balance to make. You can either go through the whole thing with everything being fully lit, but then you have to obviously burn torches to keep the light level up. And as it gets darker, you get more rewards, but it's harder, essentially. So what do we have to do? We have to explore 90% of rooms. Now, as far as I know, there are seven rooms here. I think that basically rounds down. So we're going to just move on. That means we probably have to do six of these seven rooms. There is a torch right here. Here's another reason not to take too much stuff, is that you tend to find stuff on the way. But I'm hoping to actually get something worth talking about. Okay, cool. We've got unholy things. They are surprised, which means they will go at the end of our go. If we think that we can't kill them outright, they've only got 8 HP. We can always think about stunning them. They're likely to have a very high bleed... Uh, bleed resist, see that 200% bleed resist? There's no way we're going to bleed that thing, so we might as well just shoot it in the face. Six! You... don't really need to do anything? I guess you might as well light this thing. So there's two types of damage, obviously. There's straight up damage that you do now, and then there's damage over time. Which takes... the, the unit will take damage on its first go. Might as well sell a sacrifice and probably finish it off the unit. That's very good. Destroy them all. Unlock strong box. Might as well unlock it. Uh, might as well take it because it's unlocked, I suppose I should say. Uh, sometimes they're locked, which is why you would need a skeleton key. And here's a pile of rubble, which is why we take shovels. Stone seems bent on preventing so the stress damage here, you see these who are already quite stressed. I believe that's from the journey that they took to get here on the stagecoach in the first place. That's fine. I should probably keep a more of a, pay more attention to the torch, but honestly, these things are surprised anyway, which is as surprising to me as it is to them. Because normally when your torch is low, I guess we just noxious blast one of these. When your torch is low, you're more likely to be surprised and they're less likely to be surprised. Pistol shot. Yeah, let's take this thing out because the stress, which I mentioned earlier, that can have huge negative repercussions if you let it get to max. Uh, max of 100, I should say, not max of 200. It's even worse at 200 than it is at 100. We might as well just keep judgmenting these things. If we can get one of these to die of its own accord, this is going to be four damage per round, which is outrageous amount of uh, damage, and you have three HP left. So that one is dying next round, irrespective of what I do. So we should possibly think, can we hit the thing at the back? This unit cannot, so... Edge are useless. We'll just <laughs> beat the shit out of that. So yeah, stressful incantation is what I was hoping to avoid. Because that's 22 stress on the first mission. That's outrageous. Uh, I might as well... No one's blighted, so this is no use. If I embolden you, then maybe you can one-hit that. How does that sound? I don't know if you can resist the buff. Oh, crit. So a crit will have the opportunity to re reduce stress, even on a different unit from the one that actually did the critting. But we should probably... Let's just burn a couple of torches there. Why don't you um, not use... Thank you. Please keep the stacks in order, game. Oh, still nothing. Now, we probably skip this room or this room. We might as well go around the outside like a trailer park girl. Because arbitrary decision is arbitrary. Let's have a look in here. Ah, you have got uh, a kleptomania thing? That was a really good haul, <laughs> you fucking dick. Let's have a look. Yeah, Kleptomaniac will steal items. So these things cause stuff to happen that you don't really want to happen, and these things buff you during the thing. So we'll only pray for stress relief. We'll see that later. But Kleptomaniac meant that Ed there... Oh, we should probably crank on the torch. Uh, decided to open out of his own free will. Let's see what else we've got. Known cheat. Well, it's not allowed to gamble. That's fine. 
Uh, less HP. Obsessed with self-worship. I'm not quite sure what that does, but I expect it's bad. And D is a cove foe. But 10% plus 10% scouting chance in the Warrens. We haven't had a scout yet. So we can't see what that does. But cove foe is probably bad, but I expect we can find a Vestal or similar healer to play in the cove. So it's not too much of a big deal at the stage. Like this. This actually buffs me and debuffs them and does 2 to 3 damage. I'm going to risk it for a biscuit. Debuff, no? Ah. Uh, guess it didn't debuff them. Let's have another look at that. We'll have a look at that in a bit. I thought that was a debuff on them for 80% something. We've got a bleed on here, but we can damage that up before it does too much damage. Oh, it did actually uh, do one point of damage as well. Uh, healing as well. That's really good. I'm a fan of that. So this judgement here, we might as well wail on the thing that's going to do a lot of stress damage, which is an excellent hit. That was actually the negative because it gave us less, it gave us a stress relief from having crit, and it healed us, and you will, what, what's this? 4 to 8 and 15 each, 3 to 7, or we just take one of them out super fast. There's a chance we one hit, hit that, but not that. We could stun this one, which can do a lot of damage to us. But this is the only one that's actually got an action left, which isn't too damaging. So we might as well try and one-hit this. This is not what happened, but... It's not... Ah, that's actually quite a lot of damage. I was going to say this thing can't do just too... Too much damage to us, but I guess it can. That's alright, we're learning. Another crit. We're critting a lot, and I think it's because of the light level. Oh, it tells you. So, at this light level, we've got... We take more stress. We have uh, still got a chance of surprising monsters. At the next light level, it's no stress and way more of those two. But as it gets lower, we gain more stress, but also gain more loot. Uh, what do we do here? Is anyone... Yeah, you're bleeding, so we'll cure you for one HP, which is not an insignificant amount at this stage. Right, I'm going to try and stun this. The reason being, even though it's had its go this turn... Uh, D's the only one left, and that's the healer. So what we can do is we can heal Pete here, and then on the next go, even if this goes first, we don't have to worry about it because it won't be able to take its turn. Uh, I guess we just open vein. Try and bleed it a little bit. Do some damage, get some bleed on it, so when it takes its turn, it, you know, takes 2 HP. Now it's a lot closer to death. Uh, battlefield medicine. No one's really got any problems, so we'll just heal ourselves, I suppose, for 1 HP. Big deal. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what I wanted. For D to have the go before Ed. Because now Ed can get a go and just beat the shit out of this. And provided we don't miss, which we didn't, uh, we get all the rewards, which is actually really good. What's in here? Uh, an heirloom chest is usually locked, but if we unlock it... See, these are the things we're here for, these deeds and stuff. Because they will help us improve our town and get us to level up. Uh, we want to have a, a team of well-experienced oh, uh, adventurers. That's, will find no that was a bit of a mean trap. I'll, uh, I'll keep the torch light high because we brought a lot of torches. And at this stage, I think doing darkness runs is not necessary. The best thing to do. Are you going to steal from there? No. Let's see what's in it. <coughs> Pardon me. Eight fucking food. We might as well take it. What's this? A stun charm. 20% stun resistance and minus two dodge. Uh, yeah. You can have that. That's reduced our dodge chance, which means we're more likely to be hit. I don't think there's actually anything around that's going to stun us at this stage of the game. Yeah, eat. But uh, that's fine, really. Also, you can eat some food to just gain some HP. It's very useful because we have so much food from finding it. Oh, we're nearly done. It's been a very quick mission, but that's probably for the best. We'll keep the torch up. We've got lots of torches. And I'm glad we brought two shovels. We did find one, I think, actually. Oops, I didn't, uh, didn't use a torch before I came in here. And there's definitely going to be combat because it's this game. It's always going to have combat. Let's see what we can do here. We've got pistol shot can hit any of those three. 
Grape Shot Blast can hit all of those three. This thing does a lot of stress, so if we can get rid of that ASAP, that'd be brilliant. Tracking Shot. Right, so what's happening here is it's a high accuracy shot with a low damage, so the damage is minus 80%, but then it buffs us, so that the next time we do something, we've got a higher crit chance, higher damage, and a higher accuracy. So, it's also one of the only attacks that we have that can hit this thing at the back. So I think we should start doing that, give ourselves a little bit more accuracy for next time. I was really hoping that that thing was not going to go first, because we're going to have to get rid of a lot of this stress in town. <coughs> Excuse me. Whew. This cough will not go away. Uh, maybe we start... Yeah. Heat, fart all over those, will you? Yeah, blight is good. We're going to uh, succumb to a bit of damage. Damage is okay. You heal automatically when you get back to town. The problem is not the damage, but the stress. I think we want to make sure this thing dies. Oh, uh, we might as well hit this. As men mentioned, we don't have many things that can actually hit the back. But well, that's quite a lot of damage for something that also heals us. That's quite a powerful attack, I think. Plus it gave us a little bit of extra torch. Which is, uh, not useless. And, like, I'd like to be able to stun this one. But this one hasn't been yet, so we might as well try and stun it. Which we did manage to do. So then the sun comes off, it takes some blight damage, and it's... Yeah, we're doing a lot of damage to that, that's really good. This thing needs to stop having the first go. This is what the speed stat does, I believe. Uh, it determines who goes first. So now we've got open vein, can that hit that? No, and these things have huge bleed resist. In fact, they all do. So... I think I want to get rid of this. Oh, that was really good. And it didn't leave a corpse, which is ideal, because now this thing's in the third position where many more of our... Um, units can actually attack. Just keep keep this flight up. So if that hits again, yeah, that's 8 damage per round. And it's only got 9 HP. So this thing's basically dead. So we can maybe use a Grape Shot Blast or something to get all of them closer to death. Uh, we should probably heal, heal Pete over here. Because he's going to die. So this stress thing, whilst they're in town, Essentially, they're going to be unavailable for the next mission. That was overkill, but never mind. They'll be unavailable for the next mission because they'll be de-stressing back in town. Which is not ideal, I suppose. Eight, ten. I mean, they've both got a go left, so they will take damage from that noxious blast. It's more a case of, can I make sure that they don't get to go, right? Nine. I can shoot this one for five to nine. Yeah, seven. Maybe I should have put the blight on that one. Then it would be dead. But then this one wouldn't be close to death, so... Hindsight, right? Man, they both failed to hit me, which is ideal. I think we can zealous accusation and actually win this. Yeah, because this one's definitely going to die before it gets to shoot us next time. Well, shoot at us. Which means we can start healing up a little bit. Not that we need to. I'd like to actually have some stress heal rather than actual heal, but that's fine. You know what? Just shoot it. Just stab it. Whatever. Let's get this over with. This should be the end of the mission. It is. We will continue adventuring in order to open this, but we don't have a key. See what happens. It's trapped. That's fine. I mean, it was Blight. We could have taken the damage and still been fine. So we'll go back to town and see what we come home with. This uh, health stone is going to be useful for our tank. Wow. All this. Plus the 3,000 we started with. Yeah, that's a decent amount of cash. And then these are going to help us upgrade the actual uh, town itself. What did we get here? Slugger. Wow, that's really good because you're actually a melee character. And this... That could be bad. But for the next mission, it's not going to be bad because you're not going to be on the mission at all. In time, you will know the tragic extent so, of my failings. The tavern and the abbey are now unlocked, which is great because we need to send them here. You are going to be our most stressful one, but you can go anywhere. So we can send you to maybe the tavern. Fresh kegs, cards, and curtains. How much does that cost? Thousand. Can we make it cheaper? And well, alike. we could increase stress recovery and reduce the treatment costs and then confirm that. And await those who cross I'm not going to upgrade these things until we're actually using them, I think. 
mostly because that way we save the things that we've picked up. We've got, you know, we've not got too many at this stage, and we we kind of want to sort of build up a, a good supply of these. But everyone's level one, that's good. But we're going to be picking up another couple of level zeros in a minute. Uh, is it worth sending you? That's the thing. Like the stress here. She didn't get much stress. She started off with two pips and now he's on four pips. So I think we'll leave Pete in the pub, which is normally where we leave Pete. And Dee can come with us on the next one. But we'll see who else we've got for the next episode. A Houndmaster I've never seen before. So we'll take one of those. A lawman and his faithful beast. I mean, we might as well take everything that we've got because our roster is not full. And, bloodshed. Uh, and then I'll see who wants to be called what, and next episode I'll probably rename these characters. But for now, that is our first episode of a brand new series on Darkest Dungeon. Thank you for watching if you did, and if you didn't, then please go back and watch it. Uh, if you liked it, leave a like and leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more. But until next time, I will see you then.